I choose to change my skin color. Does it remove food from your plate? No. So stop pointing a finger at me just because I chose to lighten my skin. We don't like the way you chose to live your life, but you won't see me at your doorstep. People think, oh, uh, if you bleach your skin, if you change your skin color, or if you do something to your body, you're not confident. As for me, it's not about confidence. As for me, people like me glowing, so I went with the flow. If this glowing is giving me money, babe, I'm not losing it for anything under the sun. If this glowing is going to build, the, build me a mall in the next five years, why would I listen to you? Your blackness has not paid you. So should I stay black and broke or should I bleach and be rich? I am Amy Francie. Uh, I am an entrepreneur and a philanthropist. Most of you know the Mummy Francie on social media, but before the Mummy Francie on social media, there was a little girl who had a dream. There was a little girl who had a vision of where she wanted to be and uh, by God's grace here I am and um, at one point I was a street girl at one point I'm married at another point here I am inspiring another little girl to never give up because this world can hold every and any dream you've ever had I am living my dream not yet there but part of my dream, I'm living it. And I'm here to share my moments with you people. So uh, actually, at home I was a very quiet kid because the environment was not okay <clears throat> at home. So in school is where I was everything because that in school was my happy place. In school was my fun place. I, I never used to miss school. Uh, we lived in... Um, Kambikikuyu, Kambikikuyu iko, iko Mombasa, um, somewhere around Kongoya. Uh, Nikija Nikijijua, we were living there, and then we went and lived in uh, BOK, and then we went to Kisauni. All my life, born and raised in Mombasa. So <clears throat> the reason I said my home was not homely is because I come from a broken home. Yeah, so my dad and my mom separated when I was six, and... Uh, so it was not just a, it was not a very, very happy home for me. So I told myself, when I'm done with my phone for exam, I'm leaving. And that's what happened. I didn't know where I was going, but I was just like, when I'm done with my exams, bye. So at the cost, if you were blessed to have parents who care, parents who look after you, parents who are there for you, things are going to be different compared to a child who has a single parent and the parent doesn't care and the parent is not responsible and the parent is not. So many things, your home is just not okay. So many things happen. People end up into bad, bad hands. I've always been a dreamer and I've always been um, a believer of my tomorrow is much, much better than today. And uh, another thing, I'm a risk taker. A very big risk taker. Okay, after high school, things were not that, that okay. Things were not as I expected, as I pictured them to be. Yeah, because I'm a small girl, 17 years outside the world. I have no knowledge about nothing apart from just the school. But one thing I did... From that moment, I lost my shame. I left home, went and lived with a conductor. I lived with the conductor for some time, less than eight months, less than six months, not quite sure. So, the conductor stayed there, got a better version of a man. 
than the conductor. So I left the conductor, went with the other man. And thank God the other man, akanipeleka nikaishi na rafiki yake msichana. Ever since I left like this home, I've never just stayed like this, no. I found something to do. Uh, when I was going to leave with the conductor, there was a saloon called uh, Liz at Bakarani. So we used to go there, do a little bit of jobs, blow dry, osha nyuele, apanapali, unafundishwa kusonga kidogo. So you earn kidogo kidogo chenye kila kuja. So that is when nilikuwa najishikilia. So the moment nilikuwa najisikia kwa hiyo saloon kidogo. So when I got the better stone to step on, I became a, a, a dancer. I used to twerk on road shoes. We were a duo, me and Eve, and uh, everywhere we go, there was no road show in Mombasa. In Yetaenda, Bila Mamina Eve. So from road shows, we started going to clubs, dancing in clubs. From there, we started appearing in uh, music videos. For me, it was my first, but I embraced it. I loved it. I did it with a passion. The first road show I did, and it went for a month, Ielini's idea to move out. So at 19, I was already living alone. At 19, I had my own home. And um, I was like, kwangu. no one to monitor me, no one to tell me anything. I have a roof over my head. At Nikilalanja, but I have a roof over my head. That's it. At 19, Sijaenda College, I don't know how to operate a computer. I don't know how to do anything. But God gave me a secretarial job. As I was going to the office, naendo kwa office, nikifundisho kutumia computer, nikifundisho to do every other thing. And then that's when I started taking a secretarial course that I did not finish. <laughs> I didn't finish that course. But I was good at my work. I was really, really good at my work. When I was 20, I met my mbaba. The man I'm married to. Mm. That man. Yeah, so msidani tulianza hapa. Limpata nkiwa mtoto badu na msumbo uko inje. Amengangana na mimi. <laughs> Amengangana na mimi pakasai. He was there for me. And he was the calm of my tantrums. He was the peace of my troubled world. Understand? Have you ever been at a noisy place? And then... Uh, all of a sudden, there's just peace and calm. So, when Baba came to my life, there was that. It was just peaceful. It was just calm. He was a good listener. He was responsible. He would, um, he would not be like, ah, unasemani. No, he would listen. No matter how young I was, but he gave a listening ear. He did not take me as, ah, unimtot. No, never. My life was very chaotic, very, very chaotic. And Mbaba coming to my life, and he had come from a very, very good family. A family which both parents are there, a family which um, parents do care, a family which, when I met, when I went to their home, I was like, oh, so this is how our family looks like. Family sit down and talk. They don't, ah, okay, they are civilized. At first, I could not express my feelings without me being loud, without me screaming, without me, you understand? So, it has been quite a journey between me and him, but he never gave up on me. Meeting that calmness from a chaotic world was the best thing that has ever happened to me. So people can converse, people can sit down and have a conversation. Even if you're mad, you don't have to shout. Even if you're mad, you don't have to fight. Oh. This is a new world, and I like it here. It's peaceful, and that's what I chose. Mind you, growing up, all I know is chaos. Him growing up, all he knows is peace. So me trying to express myself in a calm way was not in the books. And him trying to express himself in a loud way was not in his books. So some of the time I will shout and he will just sit down. Are you done? And that happens until today. Are you done? Okay, sit down. Let's converse like people now. He will never raise his voice. Never. He will never cut me short just because I'm being chaotic or what. Because it has never get to any extreme level. One thing I thank God, as much as I was loud and all that, I will, I've never been violent. Never been violent. Never ever. 
So he would let me throw all my tantrums and after that, can we converse? Or do you still want to shout? When someone tells you like that, are you going to continue shouting? No. You're going to come back to your senses, sit down, now have a conversation with someone. I was not blind to know here is where my dreams are in a um, form of a man. You understand? I was not blind to all that because I knew what I wanted from the beginning. I had a picture of someone I want to get married to. I had a picture of someone I want to live with for the rest of my life. So when I saw it, I was like, no matter what, nakufana wewe. Thank God I don't know what to mean of me. <laughs> but I guess I'm going to stay from the word go. He had it at the back of his mind. She's the one I want. So it was not difficult. If we had, we never had hiccups actually. We never had hiccups. Any hiccups za. I'm second guessing this thing. We've never had a very big fight that uh, we'll call it a quit. That man in my life, he has never told me it is over by his own mouth. I remember there was only once, that was the beginning of our relationship. I was so off. So off that he could not contain it anymore. He just walked away. He didn't utter a word. He didn't say anything. He just opened the door and walked away. And that when that is when I realized Keliliako ni mingi. Na yoni during hapo bado tuko in between June, July and August. So you see he was not used to that tantrum environment. He was with, he was used to a quiet. So I remember that day I had to call him back and he asked me when I come back Will we talk or will you shout? I'm like, mm. I asked her a question. <laughs> when I come back, are we going to talk or you're going to shout? I'm like, we will talk. So, in a relationship, women, we say we are very mature, but when it comes to love, mm -mm, we are not mature. We are not mature when it comes to love, especially to the person we love. God, I don't know where that comes from. Our emotions are all over the places. Ukipigua sima ushiki jioni umeachwa. Utapendo usiku asubu kiamko ulisiposema good morning. Utaachwa the whole day. So, you as a man. Pia we brother usikuwe siste. Kwa tu brother. Be understanding. Emotions etu ziko hivi. We are not stable. When it comes to love, our emotions are either high or low. And that's why you tapata tu asubui meamuka. Someone is very vibrant to you. The next day mtamuka, amku kosana, amku fanyana anything, but she's moody. Because I don't know. We cannot understand even when it comes to love to the people we love, how it goes. So, okay, it is over. Brother, usipak virago. Tulia. Tulia, just be patient. She's your woman. By now, unajua. Ukika na mtu, more than one year, you know that person. Me, I have said it is over for so many times. That the last time I said it is over was twenty was twenty twenty eighteen. Twenty seventeen. Twenty seventeen. Never have I ever again said go your way. And never has ever that word been used in my home. Hmm. Come to think of it. It is very peaceful nowadays. I guess it's just a woman thing to find faults in their loved ones. A woman can find a fault where there is no fault. Trust you me. There is a day I remember I got mad because he wore, he wore, what did he wear? He wore a shirt that had no problem, but I didn't want him to wear the shirt. I did not tell him not to wear the shirt, but I got mad because he wore the shirt and I just didn't like it. And I got really, really mad and pissed off. I was like, Hakuna nguwe ngini waneza vaa kwa inyumba. Isi ile shota mbao lukuna vaa ufai. Did I tell him? 
No, I didn't. But I just got mad because he wore the short and he did not wear the short that was in my imagination. And I did not say it. And I remember thinking about it. It has never left my mind because that day I was very unfair. I was very, very unfair to that man. But he just went, changed the shot, and left. Okay. Not every relationship has the up here and the down here person. Not everyone, and not in every relationship has the sensible person and the insensible person. Sometimes both of you are very insensible. Sometimes both of you are very sensible. So when it comes to that, you two people who are very insensible, you should find a way to work that out. But if God has blessed you with a home whereby one is sensible, the other one is not sensible, thank God for that. Because I can imagine my home without my sensible husband. Mm -mm. It will never have been well for me. You know, it's easy to say I'm sorry to a friend. And sometimes it's very easy to, it's not very easy to say I'm sorry to your husband or your wife. Husband and wife walk out here with so many mistakes and they don't tell each other sorry. But if you are friends and uh, take everything as friendship and you go like, hmm, hey, my Kosea, let me just say sorry. So the ability to acknowledge that I'm hurting this person saves a lot. If you don't acknowledge that you've hurt this person, you'll continue hurting the person day in, day in, day out. And uh, the moment you had this person, the moment this person interest in a potea, in a potea, in a potea. So by the time you come realize that you did not acknowledge the first mistake, it will be too late. Because ukona mistake a hundred up, umta likuchoka ukiwa twenty. No, it never occurred to me like the wrong message to call my husband Mbaba because this one was our inside joke. Man and man and wife always we always joke. And if you don't joke, my friend, you are in the wrong marriage, man. If you know your marriage looks like a roadblock, seriousness, uh, no, it's angamshe. So we have our own inside jokes. We have our own names that we mention each other. So me, by the time uh, I'm being with Mbaba, I had nothing and uh, I was not. At some point, I stopped working and he used to take care of me. So our inside jokes were there, like, you're my sponsor, when you sponsor angu, when you baba angu, when you ule mtu unanifanya naishi mjini, you understand? So those jokes were there, so it grew, it grew, it grew, until I found myself saying it out loud. And I did not feel any provocation, I did not feel anything bad, and neither did he, because it is a name that was within us, before even anyone knew it, before I even introduced it to the world. So growing up, I told you I came from a broken family. So I was raised by my dad. My mom was not around. So I came to be close to my mom when I was in class eight. So I was away from my mom. So uh, by the time I'm in secondary school is when I knew where my mama lives. I used to go visit her here and there, there and there. So it was quite easy for me. And we became uh, so close with my mom after high school. So even though I was not living at home, but I used to go to my mama's place every now and then. When things get bad outside here, I go back crying to my mother. Even though my mama at that time was very, very sickly, but she's my mom. Yeah. So when I introduced, I remember when I was introducing my husband to my mother. She was not that sick. She was having nafu, alikuwa nafu at that time. So when I told her, mom nakuletia mtu uone, imagine that woman, my mom is chaga. And the chaga staple food is matoke. So if a chaga cooks you matoke, that means she has welcomed you. So we went home and my mother had cooked for him. He had cooked him matoke and meat and uh, she was just there, happy. And when I get there, she was happy, akam salimia and she was like, nena kapakuwe chakula. I went, served him and was like, no, chukwa kijuko kule na mwenzaku. And I guess that is when we just got married. That was a symbol that I did not see at that time. I was young. I did not see. I was just like, she's just welcoming. But I guess my mom had foresee everything before she left. So by the time I'm meeting Mbaba was 2015. By the time I'm losing my mom, 2016. You know, at that time I was young, things were just happening, so I did not put my mind into them. And at that time, I will lie to you, I was not that spiritual compared to right now. So, 
things have started unfolding 2018 i was like all these things were symbols all these things were just connections all these things were just showing me this is the right part you know you understand so i came to understand way after i started building my brand way back before uh, when uh, I was a model and I noticed mm, I have something to offer back in 2019 uh, at that time my 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 man was away and uh, I was he had already taken me to makeup classes at that time I could do my own makeup and so I went to school uh, I went did uh, I did both Arabic makeup and English makeup Arabic makeup I did it at Sam's house of beauty Ikwapokisauni and uh, the English makeup those another Nigerian woman who came and I just went for some top knowledge so I had a small salon and um, an opportunity presented itself I was just sitting in my salon I had a call mommy uh, there's a certain project here and there, and we would love you to come and model. But I was like, why not? It doesn't hurt. So I went. So since the opportunity presented itself, I did it to the best. I, did know, I didn't know how to cut work. I didn't know how to pose. But whatever I was taught, I took it, grab it. Because I was like, it is now or never. May, I might be going to a magazine. You never know. So do it at your best. Vogue might be coming anytime soon so let me just do it at my best and i did it at my best and uh, i came out of that um modeling project with some jobs on my back there's some people who had seen me and they liked me and they wanted to work me to work for them in their boutiques like modeling for their clothes taking pictures so that they can post you understand so that is where my content creation peer began my husband was away and then COVID things, jobs didn't go okay, so he came back home, and we started from down, flat. Life gave us a flat blow. We were up here, and then we just went bah, down. And at that time, was like, I'm courageous. I think, I've been thinking about things, but I've not been doing them because I was comfortable. Everything was being provided. So I never pushed hard because I never had to work so hard. Everything roof over my head, I eat well, I, I look good, my nails are made, my hair is made always, every other time. So why am I working hard? But during that moment when life went down, I had to rise up. I just woke up one day and decided, okay, where do I start? Where is not crowded? And I saw an opportunity, I grabbed it. That was TikTok. Everyone on TikTok was dancing. The only content on TikTok mostly was people dancing, just doing challenges. I was like, here is where I'm gonna collect my money. Here is where my money is. Because no one is doing it here in Kenya. People used to do it, but not in Kenya. At that time, businesses were on Instagram and Facebook. A lot of businesses, not many businesses were on TikTok. So I saw an opportunity, I grabbed it. And it favored me. So I just woke up one day, I have, a be I have beauty products. And... Uh, the brightening and lightening products. No one had just come forward and say, I'm brightening my skin, I'm bleaching my skin. So I took my courage to TikTok. I sell beauty products. They lighten, they brighten you up. So you want to buy? Come on. Iki hapa kinaitwa ki face cream. Face cream ni cha kukutaradishia uso wako. Unaona na nilivo. Mtoto smooth. Yaani mtoto Mtoto uso kama tako la mtoto atajiri. For the people who say, who come for us, people who lighten our skin, it is a decision. It is my decision. I choose to change my skin color. Does it remove food from your plate? No. So stop pointing a finger at me just because I chose to lighten my skin. There are some choices in your life. You chose to do them. 
We don't like the way you chose to live your life, but you won't see me at your doorstep coming to tell you, I don't like it, I don't know. But you people are always over us parading. That was a choice that I made. Allow me enjoy my choice or allow me fail with my choice. Relax. I'm not using your money. Neither am I using your lotion. Neither is it your skin. I don't sleep next to you. So how is it even bothering you? People think, uh, people who lighten their skin, people who bleach their skin are not confident. So it comes from that point. People think who, uh, if you bleach your skin, if you change your skin color, or if you do something to your body, you're not confident. It's not about confidence. As for me, it's not about confidence. As for me, people like me glowing. So I went with the flow. If this glowing is giving me money, baby, I'm not losing it for anything under the sun. If this glowing is going to build, it, build me a mall in the next five years, where would I listen to you? Your blackness has not paid you. Me bleaching my skin is putting some food on my table. Me bleaching my skin is going to give my siblings a good life at school. So, so should I stay black and broke or should I bleach and be rich? So it's just that way. I weighed. I weighed. I really weighed. At some point, I was like, not because it was bad, but I was just like, mm, I miss my skin color. Can I go back? Black and poor did not sound well. Bleach and rich, it sounds really, really nice. As long as I'm careful, as long as I know what I'm putting on my skin, I believe in my heart, in my head, and uh, my fans being my witness. I'm the most honest product seller. I can stand anywhere by my word. I sell my products with precautions. I sell my product and uh, I always give them on tips how to take care of your skin. So I make sure where I am with my skin, I want my client to be at the same pace. So that tomorrow when she decides I don't want this lifestyle anymore, she'll be back where she wanted to be with no big damage. So I care for my clients 100 plus 1 percent. I know what bad products can do to your skin and I wouldn't wish that for nobody under the sun. I am the brand ambassador to my product. How I look, these are my products. I don't have makeup on as of now seated here and this is my skin and this is my texture. So what I use on my body is what I will sell to my clients because I have been on uh, rough patches with these beauty products because people sell just because they want. I don't know what goes in their mind, but most of us are not truthful to our clients because of what happened to me. So I decided I'm going down this road. I never wanted to sell beauty products, but it's just because of, ah, unapakanini. Ah, your skin is glowing. You look nice. So, ah, I was like, that's a business opportunity. Let me go with the flow. So I took it. And I have never let down any of my clients. So when I came in TikTok, uh, everyone was just doing dance challenge. And I'm here with something new. Halfly was not welcomed very nice. Halfly was welcomed very nice. Because I was loud. I was vibrant. I was verbally aggressive. My marketing strategies have never been very polite. Wateja msio tuamini hamjambo. Mhm. Wateja msio tuamini hamjambo. Wewe ulijua uniamini mimi na pesa yako. Ulitumia nini hiyo hela? Eh, nataka kubembeleza lakini kuna vitu vingine vibembelezeki. But ever since I've just stood here and I have done businesses after businesses after businesses. Okay, the first day I got two sales. I'll never forget that. I got two sales and uh, two sales and uh, I sent them. Mind you, at that time I still had a small shop in Mshomoroni, which is still there. So it was not bad. Come the second week, a ah, blessing overflowed. And so my first video to go viral was the one in watu kusum korogo, and I was like, usukuji hapa na ujuaji wako. Mkorogwangu unaitaji subra. Kama una subra usije. I remember that video went viral. And uh, 
I had 15 orders in one day. And that was the first time to go to DHL and transport my order. From that one video, from that bad publicity, because that video did not have any beautiful review. Una kiburi na una bleach. Mm, why are you bringing bleaches here? So everything about, bad about bleaching was just there. Mimi siwezi bleach, mimi siwezi bleach, something like those. Mwena biashara wezi kwa kama wewe, kuwa mpole, mbono unongelesha watu hivo. So from that video, I knew the people in the comment section are not my targeted clients. Many people didn't understand. Until today, people don't understand. That's just marketing strategies. Until today, when you meet a person, they'll tell you, Mami ni jeuri, Mami anakiburi, Mami can never, I can never do business with such a person. In every field of business, we have the good and the bad. So it is up to you as a person. It is up to you as a person to decide where you want to go and buy your product. And myself, so it is always about the client. I cannot go fighting anyone. I cannot go tell, you stop selling, but mm -mm, I can't. And it is not only in my, uh, let's say, skin industry only. Come to Magari. We have people who sell bad cars. Come to water. You understand? So it is just there. It will be there. You as a client, do your own research. What do I want for my skin? I won't force you or choke you come buy from me. No. But wewe jelimishe. This skin is, is the biggest part of our body. Once you go wrong with it as a woman, you will hate yourself. I've used my own product. Now it is six years. Never have I changed to any product. Never, never. If you want a consistency of me, just go to TikTok. TikTok just Google Mami Francie way before 2021 and get my videos from 2021. Am I ever going to change my complexion, reverse myself to the black beautiful woman I was? Um, I'm not quite sure. If the glow favors me, I will glow forever. If the glow stays, I will glow forever. Maybe I might have a change of mind when I get old with wrinkles. I'll be like, eh, kwa nataka kushindana na watoto tena. Acha niwachie weupe watoto niende tu kwa nyanya mweusi at some point in my life. But I'm saying, my glow is here to stay. How I got myself here was very unknowingly, actually. I'll tell you how I got here. was very unknowingly. So, um... I, at, at some point, I did a kuza nguo kongwea. So, when you're selling nguo at an open place, jua ina kuchapa kila siku, so you tend to darken. So, when you tend to darken, you'll just be like, mm, can I have something just to brighten me up to my normal complexion? Hey! Mm. That's why I tell you, I know what bad products can do to your skin. Someone lied to me. Mungu ata kuchoma vibaya wewe. Someone lied to me, so I was just yeah, naive. I didn't know about bleaching. I was just naive. So I was given something I used. After using, I didn't know how it got from one place to another. Let me tell you, there are bleaching that can bleach you for three days. So by the time I'm noticing, it's been two weeks, and everyone is like, hey, mami, I'm like, to me, it's not ringing. To me, it's not ringing. Some comments were coming very nice. Unapendeza. So, ukiambe unapendeza, will you stop? Ata kama niwe unambe, you're looking nice. Will you stop? You won't. You'll continue because unapendeza. So, I focused on unapendeza by the face and forget the rest of the body. By the time I'm going one month like this, I had stretch marks. Stretch marks. And at that time, is the time that I was just from losing weight so you can imagine stretch marks like lose weight, alafu zimekujia zikapatikana with bad products. So it when it wasn't. Because I was um I was 105. I lost weight to 50. So 
when I started going to the gym, I lost the weight. After losing the weight, so the stretch marks came in. When the stretch marks came in and then a mixture with uh, the bad products, loose skin, the little bit of stretch marks that you have, so it was just too much. So by the time I come and discover like this, my skin was worse. Was, was, was. I remember I used to cry every day. So I used to cry every day, selling, sending my Mbaba pictures every other time, every other time. So Mbaba, to, I told you this man listens to my cries. I don't know if you want My friend, shut up. This man has seen many versions of me. He, he has not complained. He always tells me I'm beautiful. So, whoa, I'm going to be a beautiful he has seen the worst version, the good version, the beauty, the beast, every other version, and never has he ever done uh, oh, nothing. I'm always beautiful in his eyes. So after sending pictures to Mbaba, my body in Arabica, so he went forward and found me a Nigerian person, a Nigerian soap maker. She used to make soaps and uh, easy products. So Nika join your WhatsApp group yaki. And there is when I learned. The intention was to go back. But the point where I was, it was irreversible. I was white, man. I was white. So in the process, okay, let me tell you. In the process of desperation, I continued using bad things. I hear this is good, I go for it. I hear that is good, go for it. This one is selling good products, I go for it. You know. I'm desperate. And the more I got desperate, the more it's getting worse and worse. I'm going, to, I'm going to a point of no return. You understand? So the only point I could return to is here where I am right now. And that's why I would never want to go shades lighter. So I would rather be here safe than be sorry. And that's what people don't understand with my product. People think... You'll buy my product and go to white as a board. No. I give you a complexion, a complexion that someone won't be, eh, now who you? No. A complexion that is normal. You understand? The yellowish. Not overboard. So this is the safest place where I was told I could be. Because at that time with those bad harsh creams, ningiasha tu nikarudi ivi would have been worse than worse. So the only way to do was to neutralize it. My skincare product business has grown all the big businesses that people know Mami Francie does. Because I chose to be a frank business person. So I, challenge, I channel the money that I got from this business to any other business that I have. I sell utensils. And this skincare business grew an initiative that I never thought I would have today, that support Rafiki. So this business that people see as if it is the worst business someone can ever do. As I sit here today and look back, I'm like, I will never do any other business. It is favoring me as a person and it is favoring some other people out there are benefiting from it. I stopped doing what I'm doing today, selling my skincare products. Most of the people won't have the best skincare product that they wish they had. I stopped my skincare product today. I stopped voicing out. Or if I never voiced out, today there wouldn't be so many women able to voice out because of their skincare products. It was a it was a business that no one wanted to hear you saying it out loud. Looking back, what keeps me going is where I came from. I never, ever want to be in that place again. Never. So if I look back and I see it here, I'm going to keep choking very fast. So me working hard, it's because I know where I came from. So that pushes me to the maximum. I cannot even explain it. Any in short, sitaki umaskini. Umaskini ni mbaya sitaki. 
that is one. Second, what pushes me is God. He's taken me from holes and pits. I'm like, if I fail this man right now, I don't think he'll be able to raise me up again. I don't want to go in a place where I'm praying with regrets. Right now, I'm a place where I pray with thankfulness. Why would I waste that so that I can go start praying with regrets? Ukinipa nitafanya? No. I'm a place where umenipati anafanya. So why would I go back there? Third thing, my husband. That man is very supportive. He's very, very supportive. I'll never want to fail him. Not now, not tomorrow, not ever. He believed in me. He invested in me. That man has invested a lot in me. So if you fail investor, what next? At the end. So I cannot even come to a point of failing an investor. So and then in between there there is me my dreams, my beliefs, who I want to be, where I want to be. Like I said, I want to walk into rooms for standard. I want to put my feet where women are not supposed to put their feet, in a good way. I don't know when, but I see it coming. You know, sometimes if you don't see something, you won't walk towards it. Kunagiza, you won't go there. But you can see here there is light, and I want to touch that string, so you'll walk through that string. So see your vision. Believe in your vision and walk towards it. I'm trying to straighten a broken path for myself because I know after me there's my generation that is coming. So I wouldn't want my generation to find the crooked path, the broken path, and start also putting pieces together. No. I'm clearing the road for them. When their time comes, it's a straight path. And that is what I want to live. So how do I go about people who think they're entitled to everything that I post for them and my life and everything? Put in mind whatever I share with you, it's a snippet of my life. Three minutes maximum, not more than that. So you want to judge my whole life through that video. It's okay. I'll give that to you. I decided to bring my marriage on on these platforms because I felt that I, I did not feel I know I have a good happy home a beautiful marriage I won't exchange it for nothing under the sun the perspective out here there's been a higher level of divorces sorry to say but they are on the high level and Everyone was like, marriage is a scam. I don't feel that. So I'm trying to show you my part of my marriage that is not a scam. I don't know what you went through, but I believe in my belief in me that my marriage is fine. My marriage is working. My marriage is okay. So I want to share that with you. Sitaki kuvunja moyo wale ambao wajaolewa. Na singependa kuendelea kuvunja moyo the people who have been in bad marriages not to go welcome another person in their life just because they are afraid not to get a good person. Whatever you see is how my home is. And I wouldn't want to come here, come what may, give you the dark side of my marriage. Because no, that one will be taking out my nakedness, taking out my man's nakedness, just placing it over there. I love you probably to get to Regaliani then. That's a dent we've put in our mind that will never go away. So no matter what the case, no matter how big the fight was in my home, I will never come here and show that to you. Because what will I do to you who you don't believe in marriage? I will cut you into pieces more than you are. I am very, very intentional in sharing the positive. And I will continue to share the positive. Because the positive in my marriage surpassed the negative. Truth, truth be told, there are negatives. But 
I'm not going to leave a thousand memories, good, beautiful memories, because I have three bad memories. What is that? There's no marriage that is perfect. There's no marriage that does not have up and down. But I'm not going to take my three second fight of hurtful words and leave the a million hours of us spending together, having a good time, looking into each other's eyes with love, with care. Because most of our fights don't last. Good memories. You can have a whole week of good memories and one day of bad memory. And even it always not one day. It's just a second you've collided. It might be 30 minutes, less than 30 minutes, you may collide, you may go to the Everyone shika njia yake anaenda. The whole day, hamuongeleshan, but come tomorrow, hata mtasahau. Good memories start from there. So you cannot tell me, you want me to share with you a 30 second sad thing. And we live a whole week of beautiful things. Which one will you choose? You must be a very sad person to want 30, 30 minutes of sadness. So why would I sit here sobbing? Just because my friend is sobbing, her marriage is bad, so I want to sob with her, my marriage is also bad. No. I will go to that friend, yes, you're sobbing, your marriage is bad. If it is not working, fine, mama. Open your heart. There's a good marriage for you. Do this and that and that. If this did not work, doesn't mean it won't work. I'm not going to sob with no one just because their marriage is trembling. Oh, my marriage. Marriage is a scam. Never. I breathe. I inhale. I pronounce, I manifest, I pray for a beautiful, happy, loving, caring marriage. Those are the words each time I kneel down and I pronounce my marriage. Those are the words that are going to come for. I've never painted a picture that I didn't want in my marriage. What do I want? A long-lasting marriage. A husband that will love me forever. A husband that will care for me forever. A home filled with happiness. A home filled with joy. A home filled with the spirits and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So I will never sit down and, oh, never. It's quite amusing in 2024, uh, people still talk about uh, barrenness in, uh, in the most filthy way, in the most uh, disgusting way, in the most painful way uh sorry to say and in the most pointing fingers in 2024 where we have a lot of technology so in 2024 it's so pathetic for anyone to stand and start telling people have a child you barren you're gonna have a child it's pointless because people buy children every now and then nowadays children can be bought it's not like back in the 2000s, the only way to get a baby is by you having sex get a baby. 2024 technology is here. So many other ways. I cannot carry a baby. Fine. My money speaks. Go get a surrogacy. My money speaks only 100K IVF. As in New Shamba. New Shamba. Konge about. Where was this? So. For me, I don't take it at heart because I believe if we really, really wanted to, all those options are on board. And uh, those people who want to poke and hurt other people just because a woman has not given birth, they forget that there are so many reasons why women are not giving birth outside here. Yes, we have the barons. They cannot do anything about it. But with so much technology, they can have a baby. That is one. Second, we have people who get pregnant and they miscarry. They have a lot of rainbow babies, but they don't have a baby baby. Understand? So each time you pose that question, it pokes them. We have people who have had children and they died and they're suffering from the torture. They're afraid. They're being tormented. What if I get pregnant again and God decides to take my baby? They, we have people we have people who don't want children. Point blank. No matter what you do, they just don't want children. For those people poking, I don't know what goes behind the mind. But there's so many reasons why people don't have babies under the sun. Um, I'm Mami Francie. 
Mami Franci on all my social media handles. That is from uh, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. Mami Franci, M-U-M-M-I-E-F-R-A-N-C-I. And anywhere you go, you'll get my phone number. My number is just right there on the bio 0724 Come, let's do business. Come help me support Rafiki, my sponsors out there. I'm begging. I need you. To my clients, my clients who want to come do business with me. How are you, my darling? Have you eaten today? How, how are you? I know you're feeling fine and I pray that God continue making you looking fine and fabulous. So after that, I need your money. I have your products, you have my money, so please let's do the exchange. I sell dares, I sell, uh, uh, what are these called, um, duvets, I sell kitchen wares, I sell um, skincare products. I am a living proof of my skincare products. I do makeup. Are you a bride? Uh, would, you, would you, my bride? Please, book me. You can find my work at Mami Franci hub on instagram just go there if my makeup touch suits your heart book me so that's all said thank you and welcome to my world